with a stroke of a pen in July 1969 Indira Gandhi nationalized 14 privately owned commercial banks with that one decision she heralded a new defining era with the state her government constantly tightening its grip on the economy until it could barely walk In July 1969, the list of nationalized banks included the Central Bank of India, Canara Bank, Punjab National Bank, United Bank of India, Allahabad Bank, Bank of Baroda, Bank of India, Bank of Maharashtra, Dana Bank, Indian Bank, Yuko Bank, Union Bank, Indian Overseas Bank and Syndicate Bank. The State Bank of India, India's largest bank, was already under India's Central Bank since 1955. In 1980, six more were nationalized. Together, these banks controlled almost all the money deposited in banks across the country. The nationalization of banks was ostensibly done to ensure that they lent more money to meet the socio-economic objectives of the government. A focus on the weaker sections, the rural and agricultural sector and small businesses. Until then, barring the State Bank of India, the entire commercial banking system was in private hands. Banks, it was felt, served the interests of the few and select big businesses and the trading classes benefited most. As an economic crisis hit India in the mid-1960s, Congress leaders with left-of-center leanings led the demand for the nationalization of banks. These were the young Turks like Chandrasekhar, Mohandharia and K.D. Malviya. They believed that public sector banks should be brought into focus to increase farm sector productivity and contribute to developing backward areas to remove regional disparities. This apart, Indira Gandhi had bigger political reasons for the move. The Congress old guard preferred to maintain the status quo something that she wanted to change, to shift the balance of power. Indira Gandhi had been fighting the entrenched old guard with her back to the wall and felt that with nationalization, she would weaken their hold and give a new direction to the Congress. The fact is, Indira Gandhi had not been very receptive to the idea of nationalization until she faced the syndicate's onslaught. At the Bangalore session of the Congress in July 1969, Indira and the syndicate went head to head. On the 12th of July, the syndicate announced Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy as a nominee for the office of the president that had fallen vacant after the death of Dr. Zakir Hussain. Anticipating the syndicate's move to corner Indira, her principal secretary, P. N. Haksar, prepared a note on economic policy and programs which called for the nationalization of banks, among many other issues. The paper was circulated at the Bangalore session and provided an insight into Indira Gandhi's mind and her future course of action. But time was running out for her. Acting President V. V. Giri was to demit office on the 20th of July and the Parliament session was to open on the 21st of July. Indira had to announce nationalization before that through the ordinance route. She realized that the syndicate would foil her plan if Sanjeeva Reddy was elected president. On the 16th of July, Indira took away the finance portfolio from Murarji Desai, who was opposed to nationalization. Around midnight on the 17th of July, D.N. Ghosh, a senior official of the banking division of the finance ministry, was summoned by Haksar to his residence to prepare the draft on nationalization. The decision had to be taken by the 19th of July, which was a Saturday. At 8.30 p.m. on that day, Indira Gandhi went public on All India Radio to announce the nationalization after V.V. Giri signed the ordinance. The nationalization of banks was just the first of many moves that had the emphatic stamp of Indira Gandhi. This was followed by the abolition of the privy purses and many such measures which were interpreted as progressive and pro-poor. 
With all this, Indira donned a new avatar. From a leader who seldom expressed her political leanings, she was transformed into a left of center champion of the downtrodden. A move that positioned her and cemented her place as a mass leader.